story in the Sunday editions on the violence reduction initiative of Chattanooga police is interesting. It tells of New Orleans experience where one of the prosecutors, district attorney Christopher Bowman, who was interviewed, says that the uh, that the prosecutors would demand ten would uh, start their negotiations for plea bargains at ten years, and the defense attorneys for gang members in that town would say, "Are you kidding? No way. We're not going to we're not going to start at ten years in prison in Louisiana." we're going to go ahead and go to trials. And the result was that the, the 10-year starting point was a, a point of, of, um, of, well, a negotiating point, and it started very high. And now the 10-year sentence, he says, is looking a lot better because they know that if they don't take it, they're going to trial, in which case they would be convicted and perhaps sentenced to terms even longer than that. The story opens up an interesting uh, an interesting note about about the use of prosecutions and the the discretion that prosecutors, that district attorney's offices, such as Neil Pinkston's here in Hamilton County, have in 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 making cases go away, and that is what uh, prosecutors do, and also defense attorneys and the the state funded defense bar, which is to say the well uh, the office where Boyd Patterson works, the candidate for judge, the uh, the public defender's office, they work together uh, on the state payroll to make cases go away. And uh, one, the public defender's office in, in every in every jurisdiction is a kind of a plea bargain mill, as the story uh, suggests. And prosecutors have discretion. They have discretion. They can or they, if, if they want to, Neil Pinkston tells the newspaper, they can press hard on a case or on a particular type of case, or they can uh, they can, they cannot. It's really up to the the prosecutor, and of course, the the statements given to the press are that well, we have we have to just uphold the law, right? That's the law is the controlling factor here. It's not not really our discretion. We we just do what the law uh, says. Tennessee sentencing law doesn't mandate or require everybody who commits a crime to go to jail for the max amount of time. Neil Pinkston told the paper, it's not geared like the federal system. The federal system of sentencing is much heavier handed than the state uh, system. On Wednesday, the story says, a uh, story that uh, starts on page one of the Chattanooga Times Free Press in, in Sunday's editions, uh, acknowledged that prosecutors have the discretion to withhold or adjust plea offers. That's stating the obvious, of course. Uh, and uh, admitted that prosecutors are able to ask a judge to impose the maximum sentence on misdemeanor cases. In the theoretical sense, he said, but that's not how it works in reality. How it works in reality is it's an evaluation of the quantity and quality of evidence in a particular case, the individual's background and the severity of the charge. So in other words, the case is built and the, the, the claims are pressed more or less vigorously depending on the, uh, on the prospect of conviction. And the stronger the evidence, the more likely the the conviction, uh, the tougher the, the prosecutor can be in the bargaining, right? In the bargaining with the attorney of the defendant. Well, uh, I, I view this, uh, this topic with great interest. We have uh, judicial candidates uh, about. We see their signs everywhere. Tom Greenholz, whose uh, budget out, out, uh, outsizes the, the opponents by three to one in each case. Uh, the the incumbent he was named by the by the Republican governor Bill Haslam he is a Republican and uh, you could say he's the establishment favorite having received a great deal of his money from attorneys at Miller Martin here in, in Chattanooga according to uh, one uh, one person who's been following this uh, these this contest uh, closely what does the judge do how is the judge to dispose of cases brought to him brought to his bar by the state uh, the case say, of a, a gang member or a known gang member or a reported gang member, uh, how, is, uh, how is justice to be administered of someone who is uh, perpetually on the wrong side of the law, who is in the sights of uh, Chattanooga Police Department, who is seen to be a bad guy, who in many ways is thought to be irredeemable, uh, but who is nonetheless the, the focus of the VRI, the Violence Reduction Initiative, which has two parts. One is strenuous prosecution of the slightest infractions, a close attention through uh, through surveillance, uh, digital monitoring, data mining of the participants, right? That's where data mining is, is brought into use. The, the police know, uh, thanks to this federal system, everywhere these people go. There, there's no secret about where they go. 
Uh, I I don't I say that not because I I've seen I've seen copies of reports that that pass from the the fusion centers and the city police department, but they are there. There is some way that the, the Chattanooga police know uh, where these uh, these pretended bad guys, these so-called bad guys, are at any time. And if they don't know now, they can certainly find out with a warrant uh, without without too much trouble. Uh, now I I say, I say that with the phrase I sub comma I suppose okay that we I don't have uh, factual reports on this and I've not done original reporting on it myself and the the Sunday edition story in the Chattanooga Free Press by Shelley Bradbury and Zach Peterson doesn't doesn't go into that question uh, that that question being outside the purview of an already long story that covers three pages including a very long jump page on A four. And uh, so, so the question is: Is this is this program working? Uh, there, there are the, the two elements I mentioned. One, I think, which is aggressive prosecution. The other element that is defended by Chattanooga Police Chief Fred Fletcher is the kind of social, uh, cultural, uh, economic relationship that the city, through its policing department, would like to have with these young men. These young men who, uh, whom I think are, are <laughs> uh, you don't approach these young fellows. Riley, by wearing a military uniform, bearing guns, having a stun gun on your on your hip, extra ammo clips for the for the big gun battle, I I suspect that that uh, police officers are not the right party for for this kind of uh, of rapprochement that uh, is intended and hoped to bring peace in Chattanooga. There are by some, I, I'm, it is repeated to me that there are 200 gangs in Chattanooga. And I don't know where, where the original report for that number is. I'm not sure if I've seen published reports about that number, uh, but uh, uh, I, I repeat it because, uh, well, it has been suggested to me by 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 those who, who say it is, is factual. There, at any rate, there are many uh, groups, there are many young men clubs, if you will, gangs, if you want to call them that, in uh, Chattanooga and Hamlin County, and they're connected with individuals. They are uh, they're geocentric. Often they're, they're, they figure from a certain series of blocks in town or a, a certain number of gas stations, stores, and uh, tenement houses. That is the domain of a particular group, which is jealous of its turf, and uh, it's, it's, young, it's young entrepreneurs uh, full of vigor and strength and uh, street smarts, and not not a great respect for police. Uh, in fact, they, they they probably hate police, and uh, they hate all that police represent, which is to say the state itself. And sadly to say, uh, law and order, law and order, and the state are not uh, do not necessarily coincide. And these young black men who are the targets of the, the VRI, the Violence Reduction Initiative. Uh, hate both, and and it, it, the question I have as someone who advocates market solutions and sharing economy solutions for uh, for such people uh, is: can we have a free market that would bring about uh, what is called a violence reduction? Now, I, I have I have a I have a beef. Uh, David Toulis, your host here, I, I want to let you know uh, who, you, who you're hearing right now. This is David Toulis at Hot News Talk Radio, AM twelve forty Hot News Talk radio on uh, online at YouTube. We are live at YouTube. Just type in Hot News Talk Radio and you'll see from the title of our show today that we're going to be getting to coding reform, uh, bright ideas at the muzzle, as I, as I so conveniently uh, describe it. And we are going to uh, we're going to uh, let you see if my bow tie is working. In fact, uh, it's not. It's the same bow tie wore Friday. It's got the same problem that the the lower uh, the lower edge uh, is sort of discordant and uh, sticking itself above the the front uh, the front glories there on the on the Adam's apple. Uh, we're also uh, at uh, at, at your computer, uh, the finger at the keyboard tips of your computer at Hot News Talk Radio. Dot com and uh, brought to you by Bruce Krebs, the entrepreneur source. He is at 875-5621. He will help you get into a business that fits your interest and your background and your capital availability. How about trying something different, right? Different from what you've done. Uh, start fresh, uh, have a plan B. That is Bruce's uh, Bruce's big big argument to have a plan B. Well, there there's... Um, <laughs> there, there's speaking of the Sunday editions. I know, I know. Uh, I often just completely ignore the perspective section of the paper because there's so much just sort of uh, dreary opinion there, 
And it's so it has such a national perspective that I I don't feel like I could be informed by it very well. Okay, I can I can be informed what national perspective opinion is, but uh, I can't inform myself on on anything that's really fresh. It's kind of the same old pattern. Uh, in in that pattern, though, there's Walter Williams and his commentary in the Sunday edition. The Lord of Socialism makes some very fine points about uh, about the Bernie Sanders folks. There, in fact, there's a there's a story on the front page of the the edition in Sunday about the Chattanooga's feeling the burn. <laughs> and uh, these are, you know, these are, we have to call people who favor democratic socialism, uh, you know, national socialism. Uh, we have to just call them idealists. They are people who, uh, like Greg Stone is one quoted, a fierce Bernie supporter, uh, believes in his candidate so strongly. He drove to Iowa before the caucus two weeks ago to spread the word. And there's another man, a, a comedian here in Chattanooga, Larry Kerosene Donaldson, uh, who uh, talks about the real bullies in the room are the elitist corporations and their greed. Well, it's interesting that uh, here at AM 1240 Hot News Talk Radio, we we denounce sometimes similar parties, uh, but the solution is never uh, more of the same, which is what the, the Bernie Sanders' people propose. It's not more what uh, Williams calls socialism. It's not more socialism. It's really decentralization, a distributed economy, and that's and that's are just dull words for saying the free market, right? The exciting, brilliant, wonderfully uh, vibrant free market, where you don't have the heavy hand of the state, you don't have the heavy hand of Thrive Twenty Fifty Fives, planning at your town, planning at your future. You have really uh, instead uh, individuals who uh, have untrammeled access to to serve the marketplace, to serve their customers, right? That the marketplace, the free market, is about untrammeled. Uh, an unimpeded uh, service to others. That is what capitalism is. And Williams points that out. He says, a market economy is one in which whoever makes a decision is the one who pays for that decision. <laughs> it forces people to be sure that what they want to do is really worth what they are, what it is going to cost. And that is the marketplace. If you have, If you have other people paying for what you want to do, say, get a college degree and you want uh, other people to pay for it. Well, uh, you're not sure that it's worth your paying for it. And so you're going to have built up in the economy as that kind of system progresses, a gigantic uh, deadwood uh, area, right? You're going to have a forest full of dead trees and a few bright ones at the top with some greenery, but uh, beneath the shade of those uh, higher uh, leafy branches and the, 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 the rich foliage at the top, you've got just deadwood all along the bottom. And you have a fire trap waiting to uh, to ignite, <laughs> uh, and so so we have uh, we have these these uh, Bernie Sanders advocates who care nothing about local economy, right? They they're often environmentalists, they're often kind of doctrinaire Democrats, and they would you know they they eat local, okay? Let's let's get this right. These are people who uh, they buy into the argument of local economy in in many ways, but they really don't they're not wholly committed to it and they're not they're wholly not wholly committed to it because they want a democratic president to direct the economy they want what jeb bush who is now out uh, offered and that's leadership <laughs> do you want leadership from anybody in washington i i think maybe you my listener don't i suspect that you are really just kind of fed up with washington and but and, and if we agree on that, well, let's let's start d discussing the next threat, right? The next threat is Nashville. <laughs> is Nashville much better than Washington? Walter Williams says, whether judging by test results, by numbers of hours per week devoted to studying, or by non-campus interviews, it is clear that today's college students learn a lot less than college students once did. <laughs> if college becomes free, even more people can attend college without bothering to become educated and without require acquiring any economically meaningful skills. You know, I'm I'm an editor of a homeschool newsletter and I I push the the argument as much as I dare among uh, among homeschool families that that the college education is is mo for most people, for most offspring, college education is a disastrous form of malinvestment. And uh, you can either be uh, you can either sap your family estate and pay for a college for your your children. I I suggest to these moms, or you can do what the billboard along Highway 153 says. Have you seen the billboard on Highway 153? I think it says something like, uh, "Be courageous, be a graduate." Two two uh, lines of very large type, 
And, and what, what they mean there is that, well, to be a graduate, you have to be courageous because you have to defy the unknown, carrying with you $40,000 or some large amount in debt, right? You are courageous because you've, you've jumped off the cliff and you're counting on, uh, on a secure landing based on, uh, on the good outlook that your college uh, jobs and career department uh, promises you with your degree in psychology and literature, right? <laughs> all, all of which things, of course, you can study for free on your own. Uh, just, just commit yourself to a reading project with some friends uh, and, and you know, meet at Panera every, every Friday evening and talk about the book you're going through, right? That's really what you need. You don't have to have college to, to do that. And uh, so are you, my listener, going to be courageous? Is your teenage daughter going to be courageous, be a graduate? Well, probably in the case of most people, it's a mistake, okay? So it's a financial mistake. Either you enslave yourself to the national government through borrowing uh, 30 or 40 or $100,000 for education, as they call it, or you deplete the family business and uh, the family stock of capital uh, on a feckless, uh, a feckless institution such as UTC or Vanderbilt and, uh, and, and uh, become subject to uh, all the all the politically correct, uh, materialistic, and evolutionary dogmas, right, and all the politically correct dogmas that are uh, that are such a burden in those places where you can't you can't speak your mind about anything. You really just can't, and uh, you can't be a revisionist. You know, I'm a revisionist, and in, in many ways, I'm a revisionist, uh, and uh, and uh, I'm also just if we're throwing out labels, I'm a classical liberal. Okay, I'm a pro-government classical liberal. Okay, I I, I want you to hear that. And figure out what it might mean for you. Uh, pro, I say, well, well, all right, let me just explain it for you. Okay. Pro government means that I believe in government. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean I believe in Bernie Sanders' type government or Donald Trump's type government. I believe, and so do you. In, in the end, you believe the same thing in self government. If you don't have self government, you do not have government. You cannot have. A civil government, in fact, you can't have it because you have to have, if we don't have a self-governing people in Hamilton County, you have to have an absolute tyranny out of Nashville, uh, out of regional bodies such as the Hamilton County, Chattanooga Hamilton County uh, Regional Planning Agency, out of Washington, uh, out of federal military di districts, out of U.S. district court districts, right? You have to have an absolute tyranny from those people if you don't govern yourself. So a classical liberal uh, has as his premise the self-government. And, and what happens in the outworking of, uh, of classical liberalism and Christianity, which are very close, right, very closely combined in their, in their polity, in their view of uh, what the law should do, uh, you have, in the end, a free market. And the free market is what we are about here at AM 1240 Hot News Talk Radio, brought to you by Superior Air Systems, right? Superior Air system, superior air in the big orange vans uh, rumbling around Chattanooga, bringing relief, bringing uh, mechanical fixes to your heating and cooling unit. The number at Superior is 886-6602-886-6602. Uh, Make sure you hear Russell on Binary at 11. Binary, the, the tech show that helps you use that tremendous uh, NASA-sized NASA scaled uh, digital technology in your smartphone. Uh, and uh, that's 11 to 12. Most days after my show, we've got a gun show, we've got a prepper show, we've got a real estate show uh, here and there uh, at 11. And at three, Sean Hannity, three o'clock here at AM 1240 Hot News Talk Radio. And our, our great sports star, our great uh, hero of the sports world is Colin Cowherd. Colin Cowherd, if you haven't heard him, join the herd here. Uh, just as uh, Dr. Near Democrats are joining the burn, you, my listener, join the herd here at AM 1240 and uh, online as well. Now, we've got, we've got uh, a question about, about a great idea. Can you have a local economy idea adopted by government? Can you have the, uh, the convivial streets? Can you have the, the, the cheerful byways of a city where people love to be? Can you have it? And can it come from government? How about this? Can you have it when it's the force of law? Can you have a, a street scene uh, block after block uh, where people are glad to be? They're glad to eat out. They're glad to, uh, they're glad to stroll about uh, and uh, no, make, make personal acquaintances and have uh, the kind of life that, uh, that Jane Jacobs 
in her great book, uh, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, that described there. Can we have that in Chattanooga? And can we have it when it's forced in by good people who are better than you and better than me? I think we want to consider this and give it a fair hearing. Uh, if you go to nuganomics.com today, you'll see at the top of that uh, website for The Man Who Matters, uh, uh, in, an interesting interview uh, published at Chattanooga, uh, chattanooga.com, but you can start it on my website. That's nuganomics.com. And it's about form-based coding. What is form-based coding? And is there an underlying problem? Is there, in this great idea, an underlying dead hand? The mort main, if you will, the mort main of the planner, of the law, of the ordinance. You give us 12 minutes and 40 seconds, we'll give you Chattanooga and the world. News Talk 1240. Expect a cloudy, misty, and foggy start to your Monday after a little break in the rain. More showers will push in from the south and west later today and tonight. Overnight lows near 50 for Tuesday, becoming breezy with more rain and thunder showers marching in late Tuesday night through much of Wednesday. The Fresh All New Wine Conference is coming to Abba's house March 6th through the 10th. Pastor Ron Phillips welcomes Perry Stone, Tommy Bates, Randy Caldwell, and others for this week of encouragement and renewal. More at FONW.com. And I'm Sorgene Twelve, Chief Meteorologist, Patrick Four. On AM 1240, Hot News Talk Radio. Are you prepared? Do you have an emergency plan? Do you have the skills and mindset to survive a disaster? Now is the time to come to P5 Preparedness. We offer preparedness classes, supplies, and over 30 years of combined knowledge. P5 Preparedness, located on East Brainerd Road between I-75 and Gun Barrel. Look for the big Army truck. Call us at 423-602-2175. Do not wait. You need to get prepared today. Nobody knows what tomorrow holds. Get the skills and supplies you need or die waiting for help. P5 Preparedness. Hello, I'm Mike Little, candidate for criminal court judge with 25 years of criminal court experience, which makes me the most qualified candidate. The experience I have gained from handling over 4,000 cases in state and federal court has equipped me with the ability to be fair, impartial, and independent. As your next criminal court judge, I will focus on keeping Hamilton County safe. I view this position as a public service and will strive to improve the daily operation of the court. I humbly ask for your trust and vote in the March 1st Republican primary. Paid for by the committee to elect Mike Little, Barry Abbott, Treasurer. You want more business. You want to increase your bottom line. You want to spend less on advertising, imaging your business, and general expenses. You need Trade Bank. Trade Bank of Chattanooga. Trade Bank. Call now to get access to nearly 400 local businesses. Trade Bank. Call 877-2202. 877-2202. Trade Bank. You want to increase your cash flow, your competitive edge, attract new customers, and build a loyal customer base. You need Trade Bank of Chattanooga. Call right now. 877-2202. When you join Trade Bank, you'll get the benefit of free advertising in our monthly magazine, TradeBank.com, emails, and mail-outs. Join Trade Bank now and receive your Trade Bank debit card with trade credits to spend any way you want with our wide variety of Trade Bank partners. For almost 30 years, Trade Bank has been your voice for small business, a member of the American Bankers Association, and in good standing with you, Trade Bank of Chattanooga. Call now for a free consultation, 877-2202. That's 877-2202. Trade Bank of Chattanooga. When the weather turns bad, turn to AM 1240 Hot News Talk Radio on the net, hotnewstalkradio.com. Follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook from the Hot News Talk Radio Weather Center. Chattanooga, we've got you covered. When the weather turns bad, the Tennessee Valley turns to Hot News Talk Radio. Go, 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 go. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. The GOP presidential rivals now head to Nevada after Donald Trump's big victory in Saturday's South Carolina primary. Donald Trump looks to keep his momentum going. We want to win again. We're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz also back on the campaign trail, holding rallies in Nevada ahead of the state's GOP caucus tomorrow night. Fox's Kelly Wright. The next contest for the Democrats will be the South Carolina primary Saturday. Jason Dalton, the suspect in the weekend shooting 
spree in Kalamazoo, Michigan that left six dead is due in court. Prosecutor Jeff Getting. His affection for weapons is something that was known uh, early on in this investigation. Dalton had no prior criminal. Cosby's wife slated to answer questions today under oath in a defamation lawsuit brought against her husband by seven women. They claim the comedian sexually assaulted them decades ago. Fox News, the report, you decide. You give us 12 minutes and 40 seconds, we'll give you Chattanooga and the world. Fox News Talk 1240. <laughs> AM 1240 Hot News Talk Radio with your Hot News Now update. 40 vehicles damaged and $250,000 worth of damage done at East Tennessee Auto in McMinn County. Detective Blake Witt coordinated an investigation and arrested two juvenile suspects. The juveniles will be charged with vandalizing an Etowah Utilities tractor as well that was located nearby. They are likely to be held at the Bradley County Juvenile Detention Facility overnight until their appearance in McMinn County Juvenile Court. And a 14-year-old boy was shot in the leg on Okoe Street, according to the police. The police arrived on scene within minutes of getting a call, and they found the team with a non-life-threatening gunshot wound to the leg. They confirmed the juvenile had been shot on the 2000 block of Okoe Street. The violent crimes investigators have located two suspects, two possible suspects. They've been detained for questioning. The Chattanooga Police is asking anyone with any information to call 423-698-2525 if you have any information. If it's going on in the Tennessee Valley, it's going on Hot News Talk Radio. You give us 12 minutes and 40 seconds, we'll give you Chattanooga and the world. Hot News Talk 1240. Live from Chattanooga, Tennessee, it's Nuganomics with David Toulis. Karen Hunt and other planners at the Chattanooga Hamilton County Regional Planning Commission have ideas for several parts of the inner part of Chattanooga. Uh, the plan that's been proposed that has been uh, publicized in the past week is called form-based uh, form based coding. Form is a form-based code that is proposed to be an ordinance that will be a, a strict control over uh, buildings, uh, new buildings, and the modification of, uh, of existing buildings in several areas of downtown. We're going to find out what the goal is of this of this uh, model of design and how it'll be brought about, how long it will take to make Chattanooga's downtown areas more more attractive, more livable. And we're going to look and see how how the local economy theory of uh, personal economics and uh, person being a uh, being a trader versus being a consumer, uh, how that whole theory uh, interacts with uh, Karen Hunt's uh, work at the Planning Commission. Karen, welcome to our program. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, tell us what, uh, first, give us the proper nomenclature. Is it form-based coding or is it form-based zoning? What is the correct way of describing your latest efforts? Well, technically, the name is form-based code. Code, okay. Code. All right. Well, what, what is a form-based code and how does it work? Well, it, despite the rather strange name, it Ultimately, it's really just zoning. That's all it is. It's just zoning. It's just, we think, a little bit better, more improved zoning for the urban area. Um, currently, what we have in place, the current zoning ordinance that we've been operating under for decades, um, it's, it's old. It's broken. It doesn't work very well for the urban areas. It's very geared to suburban development, where you have buildings that are pushed way back from the street, large parking lots in front, all the uses are separated. You have commercial in one area, residential in another area. And yeah, that's not- And industrial in, in a like. third. All right. So we're, we're trying to create a, a code that actually works better for urban areas within the city. Well, where do, I, I'm, uh, coding is something, uh, codes and zoning occur in cities mostly, right? You have you have rural yes. counties such as Polk, Polk County, there's no zoning at all. Yeah. So zoning is something that affects where people congregate in mass, where you have tens of thousands of uh, in the population. How is it that, how is it that, uh, say more about how this makes, uh, makes buildings, makes relationships among people uh, better or easier? And well, describe what I'm holding up in my hand in, sure. the, in your well, comments. Well, that is a, a rendering that shows uh, just an artist's conception of what 
uh, the ML King Boulevard area might look like in the future as we continue to see new buildings and redevelopment on some of the empty lots or some of the, the surface parking lots, how it could redevelop over time. Our YouTube uh, viewer would see that there are one thing that stands out is that there are people sitting about along along the fronts of buildings. The buildings have uh, are more open and there are trees uh, lining the parking, uh, the parking, the parallel parking. Right, right. One of, the, one of the ways I like to explain this, how it's different from what we have now, is our current zoning ordinance tends to focus about 80% on the use inside the buildings or the use of the land, what you can do, whether it's commercial, industrial, residential, and only about 20% on the form of the buildings, how tall they are, where they're positioned on the site, where the vehicular access is, those sorts of things. A form-based code tends to flip that percentage. So it focuses much more on the form of the buildings. It still focuses on the use, but to a somewhat lesser extent, which if you think about it in a downtown area, makes more sense because we have buildings that have been downtown for 100 years or more, and the uses inside those buildings continually change over the decades. And so this allows more flexibility for those changing uses, but we get the building right to start with. So if the building looks attractive from the outside and is welcoming to people maybe who be, or are passing by, uh, you can have inside, inside let's say, a, a three-floor a three floor structure, you could have light manufacturing on the top floor where there's some machinery producing things, but maybe with not too much noise. On the floor beneath, you could have residential where people live in condos. Right. And then on the first floor, you could have retail and a restaurant and maybe a couple of uh, law, law offices. Exactly. Right? You're not as concerned about what's happening in those buildings as the way they look from the outside. Right. Up to a point. Obviously, you don't want you know smoke belching, noxious industries right next to residential. But other than that, we want a good mix of uses in the downtown. So eighty, so uh, so it's 80, uh, 80 20 and the, the of the eighty percent of your focus as a as a planner is on the form and twenty percent on on the use. Right. So you, you would say if a, if a, if a manufacturer wants to have a, a downtown building, one's up available for a good price, uh, he could have it if his procedures, if his staff and his equipment say is not making too much noise or is not emitting uh, belching fumes, as you sure. say. Sure. And, but but now that's not not really possible in the current form. That's not something that can happen. Is that right? No. And one of the the problems we have, if you look at our current zoning ordinance, there are I don't twenty plus different zones in it, and almost all of them again are geared to suburban development. There are only a couple that really are geared to a downtown area where you have uh, multi use, multi story buildings up close to the sidewalk and. The ones that we do have really haven't been serving us very well. For instance, we have one called our central business zone that would allow a 50-story building anywhere in that zone, which really isn't realistic or not a good thing. And so every time we rezone properties to that, we have to add pages and pages of specific conditions. And the guys that have to enforce that really don't like it because it gets confusing. You've got to go look at all those conditions for every single piece of property. Um, we also have a zone in the North Shore um, that has a design review committee that has to meet and approve every single development in that area. And committees can be a very good thing, but it's